and welcome to Stump Down the Legside, the cricket discussion show on Biz 99.9 FM Substitute Radio. I'm your host, Chucker Wilson. Welcome to the program. In this episode, I will be discussing the ongoing Australian cricket pay dispute between Cricket Australia and the Australian Cricketers Association. So stick around. One of the themes which emerges and re-emerges across the history of Australian cricket is the struggle between boards of control and players with regards to the administration and decision-making processes. The boards will typically seek to monopolise their power, unilaterally issue their directives and manage the game single-handedly. But the players will respond by demanding greater opportunity to participate in the governing structures, giving them access to information on how the game is being managed and to get better means to communicate their concerns directly to the board. We saw the same thing occur in the Big Six dispute of 1912, the sacking of Bill Laurie in 1971, the breakaway of World Series cricket in the late 70s, and the collective bargaining agreement dispute in the mid-90s, which led to the formation of the Australian Cricketers Association and nearly caused a player's strike. These struggles have once again resurfaced with the current pay dispute and standoff between Cricket Australia and the ACA. In many ways, what's happening today is a continuation of what happened in the 90s, a resumption of hostilities following the expiration of the previous ceasefire. In terms of the positions taken and arguments made, they are almost exact copies of one another, despite the two decades separation. A major difference between then and now, however, is that in the 20 years since the previous pay deal was negotiated, Cricket Australia has become noticeably more bureaucratised and corporatised, making it almost unrecognisable from the 1990s. Back in 2012, the Cricket Australia board underwent a major restructuring. For time immemorial, board members had been elected to their positions by the state-level equivalents. Without doubt, this was a bureaucratic system, with administrators electing other administrators. But at least it had some semblance of democracy to it, and placed constraints on the board's activities. This changed with the Crawford-Carter Review, which proposed transforming Cricket Australia's key governing body to a small board of independent directors. At the time, it was claimed that these changes would eliminate conflicts of interest and state versus state partisanship, improving the board's objective and rational decision making. But instead, it has created a board of directors like you would find in any private corporation, no organic connection to the game they are actually administrating, viewing their employees as inanimate capital to be moved around at whim, and a tendency towards totalitarian management behaviour. Of the nine current Cricket Australia board members, seven of them have backgrounds in corporate business affairs, while only two are former players, Mark Taylor and Michael Kasprovich. The Cricket Australia chairman is David Peaver, former managing director of the Australian section of Rio Tinto. And the other members are Bob Every, former chairman of West Farmers, Tony Harrison, member of the Council of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, Jackie Hay, non-executive director of Qantas, Michelle Tedenik, director of the Bank of Queensland, John Harnden, chairman of the Australian Grand Prix, and Earl Eddings, managing director of the investment and consultancy firm, the Riscom Group. David Peaver became chairman of Cricket Australia in October 2015. Throughout his career in the private sector, he philosophised that industrial relations should only be a negotiation between a company and its employees, without involving any collective bargaining or third-party interference, i.e. unionism. Back in the day, he was a great admirer of John Howard's work choices, and has since been one of the most vocal critics of the Fair Work Act. While at Rio Tinto, he introduced many anti-union measures, including discriminating against union members when giving redundancy payments. Since coming to Cricket Australia, Piva has made it transparent that he would like to eventually see to the disappearance of the Australian Cricketers Association. 
Throughout the talks and debates pertaining to the Memorandum of Understanding, he has attempted to sidestep around the ACA and directly negotiate with the players. If it were put into practice, Cricket Australia's proposal pay deal would substantially constrain ACA activities and finances, reducing it from an active and engaged union to a general advocacy group. The Australian Cricketers Association have focused their campaign around defending the gains won in the 1990s, when players became respected and admired for their work and were treated as partners alongside administration in mutually promoting and preserving the game. In his radio debate with Michael Slater two weeks ago, former Australian opener Ed Cowan stressed the point that the ACA offered a check and balance arrangement on Cricket Australia's decisions and finances. So this dispute is not primarily about wages or payment models, but the long-term organisational structures that exist in professional cricket in this country. And besides, if it were indeed about the money, then the obvious place to go for cost-cutting measures would be inside Cricket Australia itself. Over the past 20 years, it has become a bloated corporate bureaucracy, jam-packed full of directors, managers, executives and consultants. As Ed Cowan remarked, they've proven in the past they don't spend money in the right areas. When you look at a company with 450 employees and a huge marketing department and a huge media department, we think, where does this money go? And that's the end of the program. You've been listening to Stump Down the Leg Side, the cricket discussion show on Biz 99.9 FM Substitute Radio. I'm Chucka Wilson. Until next time, keep practicing, keep your eye on the ball, and remember to turn your wrists. Music